Welcome back, Joe Brunsman, Insurance Burger to the Stars. And what is cyber liability insurance? Well, let me just say this. Having sold and consulted on hundreds of cyber insurance policies to businesses of all sizes and types across the country, I would just offer that if you're asking this question, you are asking the wrong question. And I'm going to explain why this could burn your business. And I'm going to give you some better questions that I think you could ask. Now, first off, this is why you need better questions. The average insurance agent is 60 years old. They probably built a whole book of business, an entire agency on health insurance or business owners policies or uh, homeowners policies, whatever the case may be. None of which actually directly translates into understanding and advising on cyber liability insurance. So if you go to their website, you're probably thinking, oh, well, they've got some younger people on there. Maybe they know about cyber liability insurance. Well, probably not because the average insurance agent lasts less than 24 months in this industry. They simply don't have enough time on the ground to really delve into this topic and generally advise companies appropriately. That leads to kind of this weird dynamic where they're just trying to sell whatever they can as fast as they can to keep a roof over their heads. And if something bad happens to your business or your business is lacking some specific coverage, they probably won't even be around by the time that something bad happens. So, if they're gone, they really have nothing to worry about. They're just selling whatever they can as fast as they can, and it's really not good for your business. Next, the licensing process, last time I checked, has absolutely nothing to do with cyber insurance or cybersecurity law. As a matter of fact, I've written uh, two books on cyber insurance and cybersecurity law, one of which I believe is the best selling in the country at the moment. And I also wrote an entire book on E&O insurance just to train myself for my own job because the licensing process had nothing to do with my daily activities. So you can just kind of write off the idea that the licensing process would equip these people whatsoever to assist you. Next, understand that cyber insurance, cybersecurity insurance, cyber liability insurance, whatever you want to call it, that's not a legal term. It's not even an insurance industry term. It's just this idea that society has that if something goes wrong in a computer was somehow involved that there's going to be insurance for that. That is simply not the case, unfortunately. The next thing that makes this much more difficult is there is no standardization. So if you, let's say you're particularly worried about some sort of social engineering scheme. You get two quotes from different cyber insurance companies. If you actually dig into them, maybe the first quote, you're like, this has nothing to do in this particular area with what I want covered. And then you look at company B and you're like, okay, well, maybe that only has half of what I'm actually looking for. What is it I can actually get covered here? Well, the answer is, unfortunately, it depends. So with that, I've got multiple companies calling me every week and they call me up and they go, hey, I've seen your videos. I've read your book. Um, you know, I've read your published articles. I want cyber insurance. Even then, my first question to those organizations is, for what? For what do you want cyber insurance? What specifically are you trying to cover? And those are much better questions. Now, if we're going to look at a 30,000 foot view, I just want to give you the rookie answer briefly. So that way you kind of have a basic framework to operate from as a business owner. So cyber liability insurance might cover the cost of the following events, data breaches, ransomware events, some type of cyber crime or social engineering, and then potentially lawsuits in there. Now within each one of those categories, there's obviously specific coverage features there's going to be specific limits and sublimits and kind of extra bells and whistles there. There's also a miscellaneous category, which I won't delve into here because that's a topic of another video. But suffice to say, that's kind of a general framework to operate from. But it's not particularly useful for you as a business owner. What's more important for you as a business owner is what are your unique risks? What are the risks inherent to your business? You can have two businesses selling the same thing but have entirely different risk profiles. Now, first off, do you actually know, have you sat down and taken the time to say, okay, what would be catastrophic here? What are those cyber risks that I'm specifically trying to cover? So maybe you're trying to cover rogue employees. Well, that's a very specific risk. Maybe you're worried about, you know, uh, if I have to fire someone in the IT department, how do I know that they don't have something on my computer system that's gonna lead to ransomware, for example? That would be a unique risk. So you don't necessarily need to know the names of the coverages, but you need to know and be able to articulate the specific risks that you have. 
Let's say you're worried about remote workers. You've got workers working on personal devices from personal net networks accessing your network. That could be a particular risk you're worried about. Maybe you're worried about a data breach. Well, okay, if you're worried about a data breach, you really need to come equipped with a couple things. What type of information do you actually hold on your network? Do you have payment card information? Do you have healthcare information? Do you have PII, like driver's license numbers, social security numbers, et cetera, corporate secrets? Are there some type of contractual obligations you have to keep that information safe? That would be really good to know, both the type of information you have and the quantity of information you have. Because when you come equipped with those answers, it makes it a lot easier to figure out, okay, what are the specific coverages you need and what amounts of coverage you need? That's going to be quite important. Now, another example here, are you worried about social engineering? Okay, what type? Are you a business and you're wiring millions of dollars every single week? Well, that's a very unique risk. Maybe you are worried about social engineering, but hey, you're only doing generally the same amounts to the same vendors every month or every week. That's a different type of risk. Maybe you're worried that, hey, someone could hack into your computer system and they could you know, manipulate invoices and trick your clients into transferring money to a bad guy. That's a different risk that you need to look out for as compared to someone hacks into your computer system and they trick your employees into transferring your business funds. Those are totally different risk categories to look out for. Ideally, you have already done a risk assessment. So you've gotten all the power players in the room and you sat down and you went through all of those what if scenarios and you've narrowed down, okay, these are like the top 10 things that we just have to get insurance for. And this is the size and the magnitude of loss that we think we could experience here. Those are great tools to come equipped with that really make everyone's life easier and it makes our lives as insurance brokers a lot easier when it comes to trying to consult with you on an insurance policy to make sure you have what you need. And at the end of the day, just think about this. You don't need to be an expert on cyber insurance to purchase cyber insurance. We are supposed to be the ones that are specializing in cyber insurance. But the strength you have is that you will know your business better than I ever will. So with that, don't be afraid to point out these are the unique risks we have. Use the knowledge you already have in your head. Leverage that knowledge to your own benefit. Now let's talk about those level 1000 questions. These are the questions that I really wish people asked because I think it would lead to a much better outcome and a much safer position for those businesses. One, can you provide coverage for these specified risks? And this goes back to that risk assessment, whether it's formal or informal, qualitative or quantitative, however you wanna hash it out. Think about, okay, do we have coverage for these specified risks? If so, to what amounts can we get those coverage? Because that's going to have implications on how you run your business. Next, ideally, you as a business, you're not just going to go to the general business guy and get insurance from him. You're going to be working with a specialist and try and leverage that knowledge. I love this question. Am I missing something? Now, what I try and do is I take all the knowledge that I've gotten from that company that I'm consulting with and I say, okay, I understand these are the specified risks. Maybe we can get coverage for these particular areas. Am I missing something? Well, given what I know about your organization, because you laid it all out for me, these are some things I think you need to consider. Do you want to try and find those specific coverage features? That's a very, very powerful question for you. Possibly more important than the previous questions is, what does this policy not cover? That's going to have a major impact on your policies, your procedures, your internal controls, your cybersecurity controls that you have inside your business. So, for example, let's say you're that business and you're wiring a million dollars a month. Well, to get a million dollars of coverage in the social engineering cybercrime area at this moment is almost impossible. We can do it, but it's difficult and it's going to be costly and it really takes a keen eye to make that happen. So if you know, if you're like, okay, we're only covered for, say, 250,000 in this area, we're wiring millions of dollars a month. That's going to have a very profound impact on all of those checks and balances and internal controls that you're going to have inside of your business. It's also going to have an impact when you're talking to your IT or your MSP. They're recommending certain controls. Maybe now that expenditure makes a lot more sense for your particular business. Finally, what are the rules of this policy? 
Now, when I say rules, think of an insurance policy as a legal contract. And in that contract, there may be specific rules that you have to play by. Commonly, you're going to see that in the social engineering cybercrime section. And it may say something to the effect of coverage will not be afforded unless these specific things first occurred. So maybe you first had to call that person back. There had to be some sort of passcode or there had to be some type of verification before you're going to get that coverage if something went wrong. Now, you don't want to learn about those rules after you've already had a loss. Because if you're learning about them afterwards, it's just a flip of the coin on if you did the right thing or not. You don't want to be in that position. So make sure you understand what is not covered in your insurance policy. And then finally, this is probably a really strange question at face value. How do I avoid using this policy? Well, think of a cyber insurance policy as that's, that's the last line in the defense in depth, right? So you don't want to think of your cyber liability policy as the answer. Your cyber liability policy should only come into play when everything in that defense in depth uh, has been penetrated. So if you get to that point and you need it, you want to make sure you have the right stuff in it. Ideally, it never gets to that point. So take this as an opportunity with the knowledge you have now to go back. Once you get that, the correct cyber liability policy, talk to your IT, talk to your MSP, start thinking about, okay, what are the limitations of this policy? What are the rules of this policy? What additional policies, procedures, and controls do I need to put in place? What additional cybersecurity controls am I missing that maybe would have a profound impact on the security of my organization so that ideally you never have to use the policy? And of course, if you do, hopefully you, you now have the tools to make sure you have the right thing inside of that cyber insurance policy. All right, if you enjoyed that video, please leave a comment. I put out a new video about every week. Like and subscribe, tell your friends, and with that, stay safe.